Hi this is Gary with MacMost.com. Let's take a look at some tips for getting the most out of the Notes app on your Mac. MacMost is brought to you thanks to a great group of more than a thousand supporters. Go to MacMost.com slash Patreon. There you could read more about the Patreon campaign, join us, and get exclusive content and course discounts. Over the last few years the Notes app on your Mac went from being a very simple tool for writing quick little bits of text and keeping them in the same place to having tons of different features. You may not be aware of all that Notes can do right now. And Keep in mind to get the most out of Notes you really need to be storing your Notes in iCloud. You have the option to store them locally on your Mac or you can use another system like Google. But to get all of these features you really need to be using iCloud to store your Notes. Of course this also makes your Notes available on your iPhone, iPad, and other Macs which makes it so much more useful. So to start let's look at some tips for organizing your Notes. There are actually two ways to view your Notes. One is in List View but you can also switch to the Gallery View like that and see them like this as little cards. You can change the scale here by going to View and then Zoom In Zoom Out or Shift Command and then period and comma. So we can make the cards bigger or make them smaller to fit more of them on the screen. When in List View you can sort them various ways. If you go to View and then Sort Folder By you can choose the default which is Date Edited or you can manually choose Date Edited, Date Created, or By Title. And then you could choose Newest to Oldest or Oldest to Newest if you're using Dates. So if you switch to one of these you will also get this menu here. You can select it and easily change the sorting right there. Now there is no way to put them in your own order. It is a list and it is always going to be sorted in some way. But you can pin notes to the top if you have an important one. You can select a note and then go to File and then Pin Note. Or you can Control click, Right click, or Two Finger click on the trackpad on any note and choose Pin Note. And that will move that one to the top and keep it there above all the other notes. You basically have two groups here. The pinned notes at the top and then the rest of the notes here below it. And to unpin you just do the same thing. Now with folders here you are going to have all iCloud which is going to show you all your notes and you can't sort this. You can create your own folders here to put your notes in. Notes can only be in one folder at a time. So if you move a note from one folder to another it won't be in that first folder anymore. One of the things most people don't realize you can do with folders is you can put them inside each other. So you can take a folder like this, drop it into a folder, and then you've got subfolders here. And you can easily drag the folder back out to take it out of that folder. But another way to organize your notes is by tags. So you can go into a note like this and add a tag just by typing the hash or pound symbol and then a tag after it. You can put that anywhere you want in the note. And then it will have tags applied and you can see your tags right here. You can select a tag and just see the notes that use that tag. You can select more than one tag and you'll see the notes that use both those tags. But you can also create smart folders. So you can create a new smart folder and the smart folder is going to refer to a tag. So let's say we want to have a smart folder with all of the beta tags in it. So I'm going to say OK and you can see the new Smart Folder. And now I don't add notes to this by dragging and dropping them in there or creating them in this folder. I simply use the tags. So if I went to another note like this and then I added Beta to it, it now appears in this Smart Folder here. And one of the big advantages to using tags is you can apply more than one tag to a note. So with folders if a note belongs in two different folders there's really no way to do that. But with tags you can have two different tags in the same note. You can create two Smart Folders, one for each of those tags, and you'll find that same note in both Smart Folders. Now you can also search by using the search box up here to find your notes. So if you want you could not really have much of an organizational structure at all. Just put all your notes in one folder and then rely on search to find them. But also check out here that there are some special search things you can do. You've got suggested searches. You can search for all shared notes, all locked notes, notes with checklists, drawings, scan documents, or attachments. I note that when you do searches it doesn't just include the text here. It will also include the text inside of attachments and inside of scans that are in different notes. So if I search for sound effects here you can see it brings up this note and that has that inside of a scan. It's not typed as text. Now let's talk about using styles in Notes. 
with any line or paragraph that you have the cursor in you can choose a style. You can click here to see all of these styles. You can also go to Format and then see all the styles here. And pay special attention to the keyboard shortcuts because each style has its own keyboard shortcut. If you use Notes a lot it pays to learn these. So you can switch between Body, Shift Command B and Heading, Shift Command H very easily. There are other interesting shortcuts here like for instance Shift Command L for Checklist, Option Command T for a Table. You've got Command B, Command I, and Command U for Bold, Italic, and Underline. Plus Command Plus and Command Minus will increase or decrease the font size of the selected text. Now what if you want to go beyond these basic styles here? Well you can style your text almost any way you want. So you can select some text for instance and then go to Format and then if you go to Font you'll see Show Fonts or Command T and you'll also see Show Colors, Shift Command C. So let's use Command T here and this brings up the standard system font controls and you can choose any font that you want. You can also choose any size and different variations of a font. And if you learn to use this control which you'll find in different apps on your Mac you can see that you can set up a font like this and then add a favorite and then it will appear here under Favorites and you can easily access your favorite font types. You can also click here to bring up Colors or you can use that other keyboard shortcut Shift Command C to bring colors up. And then you can use any one of the color pickers here to set a color for that text. You could leave this open and then select other text and color it just as easily. Now if you have set custom text properties for some text and you want to use that somewhere else you don't have to recreate it from scratch. Instead if you look in Format and then Font and Copy Style or Option Command C you can copy it and then Option Command V will paste it. So Option Command C to copy will go here. Option Command V to paste. And it's just that easy to reuse the same text formatting elsewhere. If you find the text too small in Notes you can increase the size by going to View and then Zoom In and Out. Shift Command and Period and Comma. To get to the default size is Shift Command Zero. So I could easily increase the size there or decrease it. Note that this is temporary. So you increase the size a little bit to read the text. You switch to another note and then back and it's back to the default. But the default is set in Notes Preferences right here. Default Text Size. And if you change this then it's going to set the default font size and you can switch to another note and it's always using that. Now there are lots of different types of lists that you can create in Notes. So you can type some text and you can select it and then go to Format and set it to, for instance, a bullet list. Once you do that you can actually have sublists very easily. If you look under Format you can see under Indentation you can increase or decrease with Command and then the square brackets. So I can increase the indentation there and create the next level or decrease it. You also can easily move items in lists up and down. If you look under Format and then Move List Item you'll see that Control, Command and then up and down arrows will move items. So Control, Command, Up moves that item up. Down moves it down. And note this works in regular text too. You can still use Control, Command, Up to actually move the line up one. This is super useful for organizing inside of a note. Now if you make this a checklist which you can do by selecting here and going to Format and then changing it to Checklist there's also a handy button right here. And then there's some special things you can do. For instance under Format you can go to Mark as Checked and anything that you have selected will be marked as Checked. You could also go to More and you can Check All, Uncheck All. You can select Move Checked to Bottom or Delete the Checked Ones. There's also a default setting here in Notes Preferences for automatically sort checked items. So that means automatically any checklist that you create the checked items will move to the bottom. And in addition to lists and checklists you can create tables using this button right here. And a table is just a way to organize things. It's not really a spreadsheet or anything like that. You can't do formulas. But you can type and then use tabs and returns to move around and enter data. You've got these little controls here. If you select one it will select the entire column or the entire row. And then you have a little menu here where you can add a row above or below or delete a row. So you can add another column like that. Tables are pretty basic and there's not much you can do in terms of changing the format or width or anything like that of the table. But you can actually grab these handles here and use them to rearrange the columns or 
the rows very easily. Now there are other types of elements that you can add to your note. One of those is links. You'll see the button here and it's grayed out. If you've got Safari and it's not hidden, it's an active window, then you'll find that when you go here you could add the active page as a link very easily. This also works in other apps. However, despite the fact Apple in its documentation says it works in the Podcast app and I assume it's supposed to work in apps like maybe News and Books and such, I can only get it to work in Messages in addition to Safari. So here I've got Messages and Safari both as active non-hidden windows and they both appear here and I can add a link and it creates this cool little preview of the web page in this case. And then clicking it, it takes you right there. You could also control click here and you could say view as small images to reduce the size of the link. Another cool thing you can do is you can use your iPhone to scan or take photos. And you can see right here there's an iPhone using the same Apple ID and set up so continuity features are working. And you can take photo scan documents or add a sketch and this will switch your iPhone into a special mode to do one of these things. You don't have to do anything on your iPhone previous to this. You just select one of these things and your iPhone will instantly go into camera, scanning, or drawing mode. You can also do this with an iPad as well. Now with just your Mac you can add any image that you want to a note just by dragging and dropping. So you can drag and drop a file right in here and it will add it. You can also click here and use the Photos browser to browse your Photos library and pick something from there and drag and drop that in as well. When you have a lot of attachments in your notes you can view them all in one place by going to View and then Show Attachments Browser. And this will bring up a special mode here where you can see all your photos and videos, all your scans, if there are any map links that you've added, any website links, audio, or documents like scans or PDFs that you've added. And then you could select it, double click and it will open it or you can select it and control click and you can show in Notes to jump right to that note. You can also do things with the text in your notes using what are called data detectors. So sometimes you move over text in Notes or in other apps and you'll see little boxes like this. And then you can click on that little box there or if you right click on it and you can do various things with it. For instance show address, copy the map URL, and that kind of thing. With phone numbers you can call it using your iPhone or you can FaceTime from your Mac or send a message. It will even work with dates and times to allow you to add a new event to your calendar. You can also export your notes using File, Export as PDF. And using the PDF format you can keep all of the text formatting, images that are embedded, everything in the note. Even links and such will work. So we can export this here and now we can see we open it up in Preview and we have a nice PDF ready to save or archive somewhere or send to somebody. You can even import documents from a variety of formats. Text documents of course but also rich text format, the type created by TextEdit, but also something that could be exported from almost any word processor. It has a very limited set of formatting that it could use but of course so does Notes so it kind of makes sense. But here is a note that's got different styles of text in it and if I were to save it to the desktop here and then in Notes go to File and then Import Notes. Select this note here and you can see here it imports it in and it looks just like the original. Now you can also lock Notes if you want. Of course Notes are already protected on your Mac because they're in your user account. Somebody else can't get to them unless they have your user account password or you've left your Mac wide open for them to view anything on your Mac. But if you want to add an extra little layer of security you can click here, lock the note. You have to provide a password and now that note has a lock on it. So if I quit Notes and go back in you can see that note is locked and I can't get to it unless I enter the password. And now it's unlocked. All locked notes are locked or unlocked together. So all notes with a lock on it now would be unlocked and I can go here and I can close all locked notes like that. And for any note I can remove the lock like that. Just enter the password and now that's a regular note again. And here's one last tip. If you want to have this note in a separate window you can. One way is to just double click on the note here and it opens up in a separate window like this. Another way to do it is go to Window and Float Selected Note. Same thing. So now you get it in a separate window. But what good does this do you if say you go to another app like Safari and it's now behind this. Well you can actually make a note stay on top of everything else. Go back to the Notes app with this floating window selected. Go back here and you'll see that you can now command it to float on top. 
It seems to be the same right here. But note if I switch back to Safari, this note still stays on top. It's going to stay on top of everything. So now I can see it and edit it and work with it while I'm looking at other content and never fear that it will actually fall behind another window and I'll lose track of it. And of course there's even more to notes than this. There are collaboration features where you can share a note with somebody else and you can both edit the note even in real time. There's also the new Quick Notes function where you can bring up a note from the bottom right hand corner and it will be linked to say a Safari web page and reappear when you go back to that page. It's really becoming a full featured Notes app and a lot of people are leaving the third party Notes apps just to use the one that comes with their Mac. Hope you found this useful. Thanks for watching. If you like this video click the thumbs up button below to let me know. I publish new tutorials each weekday. Hit the subscribe button so you don't miss out.